Hello and welcome to my map tour of Vula Budnowska. Now, from where I have located Vula Budnowska, it has been credited to ABT Frankie Y. But I believe the original version of this that we had in FS19 was Samon345. So whether ATB Frankie Y is working in collaboration with uh, Samon345 or whether he's just converted this over uh, with permissions or not, I do not know. If there are any issues with, with regard to that and the information that I have gathered, please let me know. I will change it where I can. Now, in the description, it says Wolobrodnowska is a very well-finished Polish map with beautiful fields, four built-in farms, two points of sale, as well as a BGA and a sawmill. Uh, and it also lets us know that we had this in Farm and Simulator 19, and it is coming to FS22, which puts me in the mindset of this is being worked with in collaboration, and uh, this is very much version one. So uh, bear that in mind as we go round. Let's just take a little look at our map. To those of you familiar with this Polish Eastern European style of map, this will be very familiar to you. I am fully aware that this is not everyone's cup of tea when it comes to Farm and Simulator. I, for one, absolutely love these maps. I think I've played all bar two or three of the Polish maps that came into FS19, and this is one of the ones I didn't. So this is why I went, to, or when I stumbled across this, I wanted to have a look at it because I knew it was one of the ones I missed. Now, as we look at the map, you can see we just have, like I said before, Two sell points, two points of sale, and we have our sawmill, sawmill sell point, our animal dealer. But at this moment in time, I do not know where the BGA is. Hopefully that will become apparent on our travels. We have our store down here. Now looking at the map, I can't tell where it might be, but if we have a little look at the land layout, you can see it's divided up. Oh, I'm guessing BGA up there. Yeah, I'm thinking that for BGA. It's got nothing else placed on it, and it's a bit of land you need to buy. It's about 70 grand. So when we go around, we'll see if that's what that is. But to the four built in farms. I believe GR1, GR2, GR3, and GR4 are those farms. Now you'll have noticed coming in, you don't own anything. You've got your 100 grand in your back pocket and you own no lands. There is machinery and that is all placed at GR4. So whether in future updates of this map, you'll start with GR4 and maybe 60 and 220 as fields, I don't know. But this is what we've got to work with at the minute. Looking at land prices, GR4 will set you back 34, 35 grand. GR2, 28. GR1, 47. And GR3, 92,000. So if you already come in with a grand, 100 grand in your pocket, GR2 and GR4 are probably where you're going to want to be going to start with. These all have... Um, basic farms built on there so there's a there's a farmhouse and there is uh, a few sheds a few shelters that sort of thing so if we were to say purchase said plot do we get anything show up on the map we don't if i try and sell it it allows me to so there's no silos or anything on there that needs to be gotten rid of should i buy a plot of land and I think that is the same for each of them. I was to sell that one. It lets me do it. Now I have been around and had a quick look at all four of them plots because I wanted to make sure that they were the farm locations. This one, I couldn't get in the gates without owning the land. I haven't purchased the land and tried. These ones... I could open the gates to get into the land without purchasing, and GR4 I could. So whether I was just being an idiot 
and trying the wrong gates. I don't know. We're going to have a little look at these on the tour because there's not a lot else to look at. So we'll see how that works when we get near it. So land prices, we're looking at, say we come in field 60. Um, where's all my money gone? That's weird. It says I've got 7,504. No, I've still got 100,000. That was weird. How much does it say I got now? It says I got 100 grand. It just didn't update. That was really weird. Okay. So 12 grand for field 60. And uh, these aren't overly expensive plots. I mean, they're not cheap, considering you have to work them a lot to, to make the money. Uh, some are brought individual strips. Like 63, 42 grand. Whereas you'll get... Uh, 71, 70, 69, 68, 67 come in a cluster, but that is quite pricey, 261. I think so the cheapest one I think I've found is like 18 for 7 grand, 17's for 9. You've got some really cheap strips. I think with the way that season cycle work and the uh, the base game crop calendar, It'll be hard to make a lot of money on here at all, really. You need very cheap, very small equipment, or you just need to cheat to start with. I think the premise is with these sort of maps is that, that people owned, like, they owned 37, 57, and 7, and they just have to work with what they had, and then you'd buy up the next field that you could purchase, maybe 73. It's not all about buying up, you know, 231, 105, 106, 107, and then plowing them all in together. Although that is inevitably where you want to get to, I think, with this sort of map. Buy up the chunks, bring them together, make more money off it. In between all of these strips, you'll see we have um, a lot of trees. You have to really work the land to make it profitable, which is something what I've always liked about these, is that they're hard work, but they're fun. Now, around the map, Aside from that, you do have what would, I'd consider probably be a woodland area here and some trees and the periphery, which is a lot of it. And there is a lot of town built in around here, houses that consume up part of this land and stretch out. And you'll see it's a very lived in looking map. You want the periphery and you want to be able to edit and change anything on the periphery. You're looking at 12 million. So I think it's set to a point where they don't want you to get that and mess about with it too much. But it is there to purchase if you wish. But after that overly long look at the map, let's see what equipment we start with when we come into the game on New Farmer. So although you have no land, you do have access to these farms and uh, you can store your equipment on them. So what do we have? Small tractors. You've got a John Deere 6110M and a Zator Pro... Proximax HS120. It's the first time we've started with Zator and it's good to see one here. Under mediums, we have the John Deere 7810. We have the Rostelmash Nova 33 or 330. The Velga DK115. We have the uh, Power Stream Rostle Mash header for the Nova. We also have a small corn header, the Corn Champion 5R by Ziegler. We start with the Agro Maz POV 5XL 2.5 meter plow, which is uh, pretty generous on the plow front. Cultivators, we have the Amazon Sano 4000 Super. We also start with a disc harrow, the Agromaz BTC 50H, 5 meters. You could literally uh, disc harrow, you could harrow a whole field in one pass with that. We have the Amazon KG 3001 Super uh, Power Harrow and the subsequent Amazon Catania 3000 Super Cedar that connects on at the back of that. We have the Agromaz Planter Falcon 3. Fertilizer spreader. We have the Amazon ZATS 3200. 
that has massive width, you're going to have to remember to wind that in or probably sell that for something with a much smaller spread because you're going to end up wasting a lot. We have front loader forks for the John Deere. And under uh, front loader tools, we have the Albert Universal Bugger and the Albert Bale Spike. So let's take a quick look around plot um, four, as it is. You do have a gate at the front. It does work. It takes you out onto the main road. I'm just going to open up my map. I do like to have that open for these tours, just so I don't get lost as to where I am. Through veggie scrolling there, that's not interactive at all. Now, you don't have a placed sleeping trigger. Not that I'm aware of. I'm going to look at that. Again, we shall purchase this plot of land. No sleep trigger. So that doesn't come in. You can place a sleep trigger anywhere you want. Start from any farm you want. Start from any house you want. There are a few houses about that you can work with. Now, they are very detailed farms, very detailed lands. These maps look very lived in, in their old um, post-Soviet sort of state bit space in there now I find on some of the farms and some of the barns it's trial and error as to which buildings open and which don't you'll have some that look like they should open and don't and others that maybe look like they shouldn't and do and this will uh, open out and go right through so I'd say you really want to be owning that field you want to be owning that as you come in. Maybe that one and this one. Have that looking good. A little bit of junk around. Let's check that the back gate works. Yep. And also... See? Now they look like they might have worked, but don't. But they may open around the other side. Trial and error. A lot of sounds here. Listen to that. Now, as you go around the map as well, you'll also hear that some of the um, so-called NPC farms, maybe, uh, that are built in onto the map that you don't have access to and can't use, have cow sounds, and some of them have the odd cow moving around. Got a nice little log pile here. But this is it. This is your start and farm. Uh, we didn't have access to that because it's not to do with us. That They've got a lovely uh, JCB loader and a bit of debris there. It is a lived-in map. It is... I, I've, honestly, I've always enjoyed these. Spent a lot of time on the uh, Polish Eastern European maps. So we'll take the, uh, take the John Deere out for our tour. Jump in. Start her up. Squeeze big green out. There we go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head out to my right and we should be able to take in the other two sort of farm pre-built farm areas we'll see a little bit of the land as to how people are living so you've got this nice this ditch this dike that runs all the way along here irrigation for the uh, fields and that's how they look I think that's another reason why I like these maps like that just looks good to me anyway this the stripes of it is Everyone's got their plot and everyone's doing something a bit different. Now I'm thinking them two backfields, that the only fields with nothing in, are the two you're supposed to start with. I think they're your start fields. Anyway, let's continue on. Oh wow, look at that, you got that big greenhouse area over there. I didn't even see that when I went and had a quick jump around. Okay, and you'll see these farms, they look like you could even get in there and work that. You could probably park a garage in there, and, or a shed in that little uh, tractor in that garage, and that would be about it. So we've got to be quite specific, because often it looks like it's something you could use and you can't. I want to get in close on these ones. I just want to show you this. They're in their, in their yard. Working on the 6M, or the 6R, sorry. Look at that. It's just, just a nice little touch sitting there. He's got his bottle of red wine on a go. 
His mate's a bit too drunk. He's having a look at the back end there. He don't know what he's doing. This farmer thinks he's wasting his money paying a couple of drunkards to fix his tractor. Absolutely brilliant. <laughs> Love it. You know, you get your own RP built in already. Now, is this the next one? I don't think so. I think it's the next one. I think this here is the next farm. It's open. We have a posh house on this one. No sleep trigger visible. And again, we just have to go around and try doors. These doors work. And this is sort of a bit of a luxury one, this one. He's built this pretty new. Even the wood beams look fresh. But all these open. Come out. Again, you can buy this bit of land to start with. This can be your start farm. Little door don't open, but big door will. I like it, but I'm biased to these. I, I do have a little bit of a love affair with them. Shut the gate on the way out. And then our next plot is quite literally our next plot. So we'll uh, go along and have a little look. Got a little roadway between. We'll park out front. Here we have it. Gates open. It's like an old, dirty version of the neighbours. Nice long storage shed. And I think this one opens out onto that track, maybe? Nope. That door don't open. Perhaps because there's a wall or something there. Who knows? Anyway, that one, no go. Again, these ones, these open. I doubt they're going to open from the other side again, so I'm not going to bother trying. A little bit of extra land around the back here if you want to build something of your own. Maybe put a silo down. A bit of space around here, you can build some more stuff. Again, look, you can hear the neighbours. Hear the neighbours' cows. I think if you uh, have a little look over the fence or as we go past, you can see they've got... We got a couple of cows in the garden, which is brilliant. These ones open, following through. So a bit more space to work with on this one than the uh, first one we looked at. So then over here, oh, you can't get in there. Although I can pass through it. Oh, that is noisy. Noisy buggers. I think that's supposed to be the ducks. I wanted to get to the greenhouses, but that's not the way to go. I'm not going to waste your guys' times, so I'll let you explore the greenhouses over there. But the store is just ahead. You can see it. in have a store but no tr have I got the triggers turned off Let's just check if I've got triggers turned off I did I had info triggers turned off still can't see one though but this is the store so we're missing that if I put the uh, box up we'll see if it pops up and we move around. There we go. So here, this is your shop menu. You just have to have a little look around sometimes. So there may be a sleep trigger at the farmhouses. I'll let you guys go back and have a look. Nice truck. Doesn't say that there is a repair trigger though. We'll, uh, we'll order something cheap. Come on, load you in. Right. Try 
tractors spawn in facing that way and work their way out this way. Just so as you know. Turn around, try not to drive into the pond because I don't believe there is anything else out out that way. Now we could still go and have a look at them uh, greenhouses because there is a pathway or road that leads up in between them. I'd just like to go have a look at it. I, mean, I don't know, that even might be how the BGA works. That might be it. Lots of weird undercover little solo so, solo silo clamps. Let's have a butchers. No, they are greenhouses. That's cool. Like a big allotment plot. Everyone's growing their own, so that's not for you. But it's a nice once again something else that adds to the character I say make it lived in. And next we want to try and weave through between these two um, farms. Get up onto the next road. Around this way. And through onto our left. Be our next cell point, or our next cell point, point, our first cell point. Again, no trigger showing. But I guess what we can do is there. So just come in, unload there. It'll come up with what you want, what you have to do. That there is every chance that that is just a dairy. It's got dairy bits there, but I think this has other things. Got straw and such. So then, can we go this way? We can. Trying to work out the road network. And then up here on our left. Could be the... There you go, more cows. Uh, a plot that I believe is the other farm. I think it's further along. Must be this entrance here. I was trying the wrong entrance. That's why I didn't have it before. See, it doesn't open. Oh, we actually got traffic. But this is the land. So uh, whether that needs to be uh, sorted out or checked on. I think you get into it from around the other side. It's open. But there you've got another farm set up. You can see you've got barns and such. Since we've got traffic behind us, we'll uh, scooch through the dirt track, make our way around. Something that I often liked about these maps was that there was always a different little dirt track off somewhere where you could get through and loop around, find your way. As we head out along here, we should have our sawmill up ahead on the right. Leave this entrance here. We'll uh, pull over and jump in. Or jump out, as it were, and head in. My son literally has this tractor. We play with it a lot. <laughs> I might take a picture and put it in here as well. So here we have um, wood unload, cell point here. Looks like wood chips here. And it looks like we sell wool here as well. So could be a bit of everything. 
I'm not going to keep opening up all the uh, cell points when I do these map tours. I've noticed I've been doing that a lot lately. But we can see what things are and uh, everyone is free to come and investigate when they play. It makes them makes the videos really long and people just want to see a tour of the map. They don't want to, the ins and outs and the guts of everything. That one doesn't open. See, it looks like that could have been a farm. It's got that same look as the others, but that doesn't open. Again, by the periphery, and maybe these things do open. I mean, that would take a lot for a map, but it would be awesome if we got a map where, like, every gate worked and every shed opened. That would be crazy. It would be cool, but crazy. And then here... We're going to drive in. We have our animal dealer. And we don't own any uh, animal pastures. But this is where you come if you were to uh, have one. You can either order direct and have them delivered. You can order direct at the pen and have them delivered that way. That will incur uh, a small delivery cost. Or you can always get a trailer, stick it on the back of a truck or a tractor. Pick them up yourself. You don't have to pay extra for delivery, but you would have paid for your trailer. And as I often say, I think that's a better way to do it. Uh, if you do a lot of animals, it's more cost effective than keep paying on deliveries for sales and purchases. And uh, you've always got that track to add also a little bit more realistic. You want to get your animals. So we'll head up and see what it is we have up here. It was another sell point. We'll pan out, have another little look at the map. Let's say they are. They are nice, nice maps, nice star maps. Again, we've got some more uh, greenhouses over there. The, uh, the outer of the map fits in well with the style of the map as well. It's not just like some, some random hilly area. It's still got the small patched fields and everything stretched out in the same manner. So, is this our cell point? Down here? Let's have a little look. I think it's someone's house. Got their laundry out, but then we've got the cell point as we go through. This little tractor there. So, here, cell, unload your grain. Try not to take out his door frame. There's that one. So now what I need to do is see if I can find the BGA, which I believe is right the other side of this map. So we can take all this in. And while we're doing that, I'll just let you know that these, I find, if you're a bit of an achievement hunter and you find doing 50 or 100... Um, contracts quite difficult to do with some of the maps big fields take a long time unless you're just going off and doing all the furtin contracts and you play game save games for a while it can be difficult to do you jump on one of these polish maps or eastern european maps with the long uh, straight fields very narrow lots of them you can rack up 50 100 contract jobbies in no time at all and pop that achievement that is quite often one of the rarer achievements. Because ironically, the achievement to earn all the money is never the hard one to get because there's always cheating money in. Crazy son of a guns. I was thinking to myself the other day, that must be why um, the money cheat mod turned up literally day one. Because the the giants knew, oh, it's so hard to make money in this game. People are going to get bored. Let's make it so they can cheat day one. I'm sure that's why that turned up. So, I mean, you can buy up a couple of these plots and you can make yourself a bigger field. You take out a few trees in between, put it with something else, and a few more. You've got a plot of land here, this woodland. If you want to do forestry, there is that option. 
another bit here. How you would deal with the uh, the fallen deadwood and stuff like that, I'm not sure. It is the BGA, look at that. We knew it. So, if we come in, we'll get out of the way. There's a bit of traffic behind us. You have scales. They do have a number, so they would work if you drove over it. We've got two massive pits. Beautiful stuff. Massive pits. Now, we have no highlighted triggers, so what we're going to have to do is sell our farmland and then purchase this to see if it now works. But again, I've still not got any triggers. I've brought the land. So whether that's something that needs to be fixed, patched up, or still yet to be worked in. No trigger. Definitely brought it. You can see, there it is. Purchased land. But there is the BGA. That would be where you'd unload. This is where we're loading in. Or perhaps this would be where we'd unload. This is certainly down some sort of processing over here. But yeah, BGA. It is here. Uh, if you come on, you just have to give it a crack. See what it does. May even be a fuel point there. But like I said, at the very start, I believe this is very much a work in progress. Version 1, definitely beta, and um, room for improvement, but still a very good map. Lots there, lots to do. If you enjoy this style of map, this style of farming, I think you'll, uh, you'll be th thrilled on here with a few little tweaks. Absolutely perfect. So... Hopefully you've enjoyed this map tour of Volobrodwoska. If you have, give the video a big fat thumbs up down below. If you are new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, turn your bell notification on, find out when new videos are going live. As always, comments and feedback down there. I'm having trouble with this post. If you are the modder, the creator of this map, and I have credited it wrong, I apologise, I can only go by what I find. Get in touch with me. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, in the comments, be polite, and uh, we'll change anything that needs to be changed in the description or any links that you would like to have added. On that note, you have yourselves a wonderful day. Hopefully I'll see you all again very soon. Bye-bye.